Hello friends, in previous classes we studied about de Broglie's hypothesis and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. But since it was just the hypothesis, Strodinger, who was an Austrian physicist in the year 1926, proved this theory and derived an equation for this. So let's begin. <music> Schrodinger's time independent wave equation. Now, before beginning with this, please do remember we have two derivations for the same. Schrodinger derived the same equation in two formats one which was time dependent, and second it was time independent. Now, in this, we will be covering the time independent equation of Schrodinger. So, now, first of all, let's get to know the prerequisites of Schrodinger's time independent equation. What exactly are we going to do this? So, as you know, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle used to say that an electron can be found but inside a wave packet, where exactly the location of the electron would be, it is not known. But yes, it is known that it would be found in the wave packet. So, Schrodinger's equation is just the derivation or you can say the extension of the same. So, to start, first of all, why Schrodinger came into picture? Well, Schrodinger came into picture because it was just de Broglie's hypothesis. It was not proved mathematically. So basically, de Broglie did not have a mathematical support for his hypothesis. Schrodinger extended de Broglie's hypothesis and derived it. So this is how it could be done. Now, so to begin, let's start with the very basics. And do remember, this is the most easiest derivation that I have ever found in the reference books. So please do stay tuned to get it along. Now, if you follow the reference book, the derivations would be very difficult to understand. So, stay tuned with the step-by-step -step derivation of the same. That's an important question for your Mumbai University examinations. We know that the total energy equals kinetic energy plus potential energy. Now, I have referred kinetic energy in terms of P square by 2m. Needless to say, P is the momentum. I hope you all know how this kinetic energy can be converted to P square by 2m. Well, P is nothing but as m square v square, which divided by 2m gives half mv square. Now, so this is the equation. This is for the total energy. Now, a wave equation. Well, to be precise, a wave equation is defined as psi function, which is e to the power i kx minus omega t. This i is nothing but as iota. It's iota which represents an imaginary number. So the question arises, why imaginary part has been taken into consideration? Well, for that, it was believed that the wave packet is nothing but as the continuous function of sine and cosine. So if you add them together, it would take the Euler's identity to derive this. Now, it goes by the saying, this is how a psi function is written. Rather, you can call this as a wave function or the wave equation as well. So this is something which you need to remember. So the very first step of the derivation is taking the first derivative of the psi function with respect to x. Now, do remember we are quoting time independent wave equation. So basically, we don't want any time factor. So basically, I don't want any t factor in my derivation. So I'll be taking a differentiation of psi with respect to x, which gives as d psi by dx is nothing but as i k into e raised to i of kx minus omega t. Now, this i, this quantity is same as psi, which is there in the question. So I'll be replacing it with psi and finally my first derivative becomes equal to i k psi. So this is my the first derivative. The second derivative becomes i k the whole square times psi with respect to x. Because if you do, if you take the derivative, you'll be getting again i k as a factor with i k multiplied it becomes square and psi as it is. So this is how you get the second derivative. Now we know that lambda is equals to h by mv which is nothing but as h by p well if you remember this is nothing but as de broglie's wavelength this is nothing but as de broglie's wavelength equation now 
I also know their basics that A is nothing but as 2 pi by lambda. Of course, this is the prerequisite for wave. Now, I can replace lambda with h by p. Now, how does this h by p come into picture? By the de Broglie's wavelength. As you mentioned earlier, lambda is nothing but as h by p. So, instead of lambda, I have written h by p over here. Now, p goes up and h comes down. It becomes 2 pi p upon h. Bringing this 2 pi from the numerator to the denominator, you get h by 2 pi. Well, this is the most important and critical step. And many authors, you find h upon 2 pi or in some authors, you also find h cross. So just do remember one thing, h cross is nothing but as h upon 2 pi, where h is your Planck's constant, whereas h cross is called as a standardized Planck constant. Some authors call it as standardized Planck's constant, some also called as a factored Planck's constant or it is same as Planck's constant. So you'll find a lot of abbreviations for this and of course a lot of definitions as well. So don't get confused, wherever you find h cross, it is nothing but as h by 2 pi. Why it was done? Well, it could be a th question for your viva. It was done just for simplification purpose. It has no meaning henceforth att attached with it. So basically if we found that k is nothing but as p by h cross. Now, taking the second derivative again into consideration, Second derivative of psi with respect to x is ik the whole square times psi. Now, substituting the value of k, we get i square times p by h cross the whole square times psi. Now, as you know, i is nothing but as iota, which is nothing but as under root of minus 1. So, if you take squares on both the sides, you will get i square as minus 1. So, this negative sign is because of the squared iota. You have p square by h cross same as and psi. Now taking h cross on the left hand side we will get h cross square times d2 psi by dx square is equals to p square psi. Now you know that e is nothing but as ke plus pe. Now this is the same equation that we started with. Your energy is nothing but as p square by 2m plus u. If you notice, you have your just p square and here you have psi. So you need to multiply by psi in this equation throughout. And thus the equation becomes e psi equals p square psi by 2m plus u psi. Substituting the value of p square psi from this equation, we get the value as e psi equals this. Now, this equation is the standard equation for your derivation. Now, we'll be doing some regressions on the same equation to get a better result, where some authors do stop here, but we can also proceed further. Now, bringing this u psi on the left hand side, it becomes e psi minus u psi equals h cross square by 2m d2 psi by dx square. Now, taking this psi common on the left hand side you get e minus u psi bringing this 2m on the left hand side becomes 2m upon psi square is equal to d square psi by dx square well the whole purpose of this was to eliminate this on one side keep d2 psi upon dx square on one side and flush all the other variables on the other side so finally you will be landing up with an equation which looks something like this this is the standard equation of Schrodinger's time independent wave. But do remember here we are considering only the x axis. We haven't yet considered y axis. However, an electron can go into x axis, y axis and z axis. But as of now we are considering only the x axis. So the equation becomes something like this. As I said earlier, some authors do stop when h cross comes into picture, whereas some do resubstitute this as h upon 2 pi. We will be following the university terms which resubstitute h cross as h by 2 pi and the whole square. So finally, the equation becomes something like this. It is minus 8 pi square m a by h square into e minus u psi which equals to d square psi by dx square. Now, if you notice, it is not dependent on time. You will not find any component of p here. So if this is for x, of course the same equation could be 
resubstituted as this by taking the left hand side on the right or flushing all the terms on one side. This is the equation for x axis, of course. This is the equation for the x axis. Now, similarly, by reiterating it, we'll get this equation for y and this equation for z. This is the equation for y axis and this equation is for the z axis. Well, how do you come to know? This is just by with respect to derivative you are taking. If you are taking derivative with respect to x, it is along the x, it is y, it is along the y, and if it is z, it is along the z, where everything else remains the same. Now, what if the electron is in three dimension? Or, in other words, I mean to say, what if I am taking three dimension into consideration? Well, if you want to take three dimension into consideration, you need to do something which is called as partial derivatives. Now, do note that, and again, this could be an important question for your viva, so please make a note. If you are taking only x-axis, there won't be any question of partial derivative. You will be taking the whole derivative. Whereas, if you take the three dimension into consideration, you will be dealing with partial derivatives. So, there, in three dimension, the equation becomes d square by dx square plus d square by dy square plus d square by dz square of psi. Here, you are taking the partial derivatives of x, y, and z. What is partial derivatives? Well, this is nothing but as when you are considering x axis, your y and z remains constant. So basically, in three dimensions, you always would be using partial derivatives. And partial derivatives for five variables, let's say, if you are considering only one variable, so in that case, four variables stands constant. So here, if you are considering x axis, y, y and z becomes constant. If you are considering y, x and z becomes constant. And when you are considering z, x and y becomes constant. So this is how the equation would look like. Now, this function, if you can see, d2, d square by dx square plus d by dy square plus d by zz square is called as Laplacian function. Or you can call this as a Laplacian operator. Now, this Laplacian operator could be replaced with a delta or an inverted delta. So, inverted delta square times psi plus 8 pi square m by h square times e minus u psi equals to 0. This is the final equation for Stoltenberg's time independent way. Thank you so much for watching this video. For more content, stay tuned to ekeda and subscribe to ekeda.